last year. Urdu is the national language of Pakistan, and it had key phrases marked throughout the book. Now, if you ask yourself, why would someone need an Urdu to meet this translation guide in the middle of 32,000 acres, 70 miles north of the world? This past August, the end of August, and I can't give you the specific location, I would ask not to, I'll just say west of Brooks County, a rancher found Iranian currency two bills along the trail that comes, one of the trails that comes through his property. In June of this year, we were told by credible sources that $25,000 in Iranian currency was recovered from a bailout in Brooks County. Uh, we never got confirmation, but we believe that the individual on the right is of Middle Eastern descent, was in a group that we reported. In fact, we've had uh, individuals with combat experience in the Middle East has commented on that photo when they've seen it. This lady's from Eritrea, Africa, a country on the no-fly list. And this was a graph. I'm not too sure if you can read the numbers very well, but it gives you terrorist-related countries. Supposedly this graph was created from DHS numbers uh, and the numbers for each of those countries. Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, uh, uh, Somalia, and so forth. This total is about 2,300 for the fiscal year 2013. Now remember, by border patrols on admission, they apprehend about 30 to 35%. Then we have the Chinese factor. Uh, people don't pay much attention to this, think it's irrelevant, but I'll show you otherwise. The thing to remember about the Chinese, China does not readily grant travel documents to bring their citizens back. ICE can only hold them for a temporary period of time, I believe it's six weeks. Once that expires, then they are released with a court date to appear at some future time. Now I can't tell you what the compliance rate on that is, but you can probably figure it out. <laughs> the traffic of Chinese is so significant that Border Patrol has installed these rescue beacons and they actually work. You press the red button and agents come out and pick you up if you need help. You'll notice it's in English, Spanish, and Mandarin Chinese. There are eight of these just in Brooks County. That gives you some indication of how significant the traffic is. KRGB, and I'm sorry, KVBB Box 29 in San Antonio did a report last year on this topic, and they found out from Border Patrol that they had arrested over 500 Chinese nationals just in the Rio Grande Valley sector. And I know you can't read this, and it's not important that you see the numbers. What's important is for you to look at the trend line. The surge that you read about in the newspapers, heard on television, and so forth did not just begin this past spring. It started over a year ago. And if you go back to that time frame when these spikes started to occur, that's when we started to hear national language about the Dream Act, Deferred Action, Amnesty, and all that other stuff. That word filtered back across the border, and everybody said, here's my opportunity, let's go. And as you can see, the numbers took off. Now, thing to remember, the blue part of the graph represents Mexican nationals. The red represents other than Mexican. And you can see what's happened to those numbers. They've gone completely off the charts. Uh, this is something you need to think about when you're talking to your elected officials in terms of illegal immigration. This is no longer a Mexican problem. This is much larger. The dynamics have changed. And they need to start looking at that. I uh, don't know if you can see, but August, I'm sorry, uh, September was just completed. September would be the first to the right. It's almost non-existent compared to the others. The traffic has fallen off tremendously. And I'll try to explain why. This kind of condenses what you saw in the previous graph. This takes fiscal years 2011, 12, 13, and 14. And you can see what the numbers have done over the course of that period of time. Keep in mind, folks, this is just Brooks County and Valkyries. This is no other station. Wow. And that number at the top 
uh, is incorrect. Of the 2014 graph, uh, 32,763 is what they've apprehended this year, this past year. So that's your secure board. They're coming from everywhere, as I said, and it's something, again, can't say it enough, that we need to be aware of and stay aware of and make sure that our duly elected officials understand what's going on. You can spend the whole week with all kinds of experts coming in to talk about this slide. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. But the impacts of illegal immigration are significant to us here on this side of the border. I will tell you that this past January, FAIR, Federation for American Immigration Reform, released a report that said that illegal immigrants were costing the state of Texas $12.2 billion a year. That's when you factor in incarceration, education, etc. So there is a cost associated with it. Last part, go back to what we do. One of the things that allows us to do what we do as effectively as we do is the equipment that we use, that we purchase and use. That being Generation 3 night vision and thermal imaging. And I can't tell you how great that stuff is when you're out in the field with it. To give you an example of what it looks like, we'll play a quick video for you. This one should work, Pete. Yep. And what you're seeing is a group of 60 that one of our posts spotted coming across the fence line or coming up to the fence line. If you'll notice, you'll see flashes in the background going by. That's Highway 281. The neat thing about it, they never knew we were there. see that whole clip you can go to our website we've got a number of those posted up there we just took a brief excerpt for presentation purposes the other thing about that clip was within a half an hour and about a quarter of a mile up the same fence line we had another posting that reported 50 so we had 110 working at one time uh, border patrol was able to apprehend 87 of them before the night was over uh, this next video gives you another view of what thermal imaging is like from a law enforcement perspective. What you will see and hear is the working relationship between DPS helicopter in the air and Border Patrol agents on the ground responding to a group of 27 that we have reported. This is where Pete does his man. They managed to get all 27 that night, and none of the 27 were from Mexico. None? 
And to close this out a little bit, uh, we do as many of these type of events as we possibly can because we think being able to communicate what we see and experience with the public is just as valuable as the time we spend in the brush uh, assisting Border Patrol because it's a way that we can get information to you that you may not otherwise get. Uh, we do gun shows all over. We've got Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and uh, any kind of speaking engagement that we can do, we're we'll glad to be able to do that when we have uh, our schedules permit. We've been managed to spend three days at the State Republican Convention up in Dallas, Fort Worth area this past June, uh, which was a big boost for us. Uh, got us a little exposure with some fairly high profile folks, as you can see, and uh, we appreciated that opportunity. I'm going to go ahead because of time to cut it off here, Pete. And if anybody has any questions, as long as Pete wants to let me answer them. All right, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions? Yes, sir. I'm here. was the total apprehensions by Val Furious Border Patrol for this past fiscal year. Isn't it true that when the Border Patrol captures these individuals, they document everything they can about them, tell them to, they turn them loose and tell them to be in Houston on a certain date to be out of hearing? Some cases that may be true, but based on what I know, the disposition of anybody that Border Patrol takes into custody is largely determined by individual information. In other words, if they pick someone up, is this a first-time offender? In other words, first-time entry. Are they a multiple offender? Then they do the criminal background. Do they have a criminal background? If so, what do we do with them in, from that aspect? Does, does some other state have a one warrant out for them? How many, how many acres do you think y'all are covering here on the Brooks County area? Uh, at any given time, we are probably covering a four to six square mile area. Okay, well, and that's probably stretching it a bit. What about the Sarita checkpoint? Which is about 25 miles to the east of us. They're going, uh, uh, those uh, people are going through the Kennedy Ranch, the four hundred thousand plus the King Ranch in there. Are they not uh, and, and utilizing people like you? Uh, as far as volunteers? Yeah, mean, volunteers. Yeah. Not, that I'm, not that I'm aware of. Now, there may be other volunteer groups operating, but I'm just not aware of it and never heard of it. And the Sarita, just the point uh, to make about that, the Sarita apprehension numbers are entirely separate from Falcurius. Yeah. Uh, that's another, you're probably looking at another 20, 25,000 on top of that. So. That's, that's what I was wondering about because I'm down in that area. So you know the stories all too well. Yes, sir. And, and one time we uh, helped build a horse stable for uh, a horse patrol by the horse patrol. Y'all are not utilizing anything like that? Horses? Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. Uh, we do well to manage the vehicles. Yes, <laughs> and trust me, you do not want me on a horse. <laughs> yes, sir, anytime. Yes, ma'am? Oh, I'm sorry. Go to Brownsville quite often. I have a son lives down there. And uh, here a while back, he took a good chance. 20 foot high, no way you could climb over it. But three places, there's no gates, 50 foot wide. And I was wondering why did they spend millions of dollars on the fence and they didn't put no gates? And I asked my son. I said, what is the minute? He said, everybody in Brownsville laughed about it. He said, uh, I, we turned around, and there were some, some, you know, just small homes, uh, frame houses, and they had eight-foot cyclone fences around them with razor wire on top. The fence was more expensive than the houses. And I said, Bill, I said, what in the world is going on here? I said, the, the fences, fences. He said, Dad, he said they don't put no guards here. He said they come through when they want to. They raid these houses, and they get what they want. So the, the city built fences around their house. One more question. When we come from Raymondsville, out of Brownsville, there's a checkpoint. 
big roof, full roof. Every time I go by there, the Border Patrol looks in and says, American citizen? I said, yeah, go on through. They so they I will not be tracking some identification when I go to the Veterans Hospital, I have to show them the driver's license. <laughs> Yes, sir. Sir, you were saying that the Chinese that are coming up through Mexico, and then uh, we document them or we get a picture of them, and then we turn them loose? That's what my understanding what, what is. What is that? I mean, why don't we send them back? Are we afraid of communist China? Probably. They won't take them back. It's just like the Central Americans. You know, a lot of folks think, well, you got Hondurans, Guatemalans, El Salvadorans. Just take them back to the border and drop them off. Mexico's not going to take them. And they're not going to be able to get them back until they're processed here and they do whatever paperwork is necessary with the host country and the home country uh, to get them back. And we do have, based on what I've been told, we do have regular flights going into South America taking these people back. But like the Chinese, once they get here, they're set. They would have more rights than I got. And they just basically they disappear into the, and, and the thing to remember about the Chinese, and there was a couple of reports done on this, uh, especially the females, some people say, well, how does, it, how does a typical poor Chinese afford 25000 or more for passage into this country? Well, it's, it's going to be worked off on this side of the border, I'm sure. And a lot of the females that are coming are being sold into prostitution. They busted several houses, or prostitution houses, where Chinese nationals in the country illegal were being prostituted. So there's, there's a lot of things going on now. This lady has a question. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And that bus? DPS, Border uh, Patrol. I was wondering what about the Texas Rangers? I did not. There was nothing in the article talking about the Rangers at all. I, I, I'm sorry I can't answer that. I just don't know, ma'am. Uh, they may well have been and just wanted to keep it quiet. I don't know. Yes, ma'am. I have a question for you. Sure. Your opinion about the answer, because we follow the National Guard and the Border Patrol, and they don't have a rest of money, so technically we're wasting money. Well, Two, two points to that, real quick, because uh, I know we're in the time. Limit. First of all, the presence of DPS, the service that we all read about, recently they pumped in a lot of different, a lot more boots on the ground and assets into Brooks County just for DPS. In addition to that, the Border Patrol has what's called an aerostat, which is south of us several miles. It's got every kind of gizmo on it you can think of. Uh, we've also got now in Brooks County something called the Border. Texas, Border Brotherhood of Texas, which is a reserve deputy program for law enforcement working in other jurisdictions that want to volunteer their time to come in and support Brooks County. You combine all that together, and our traffic has fallen off to almost nothing. We finished up 10 days this month. Normally, we will report anywhere from 80 to 100 over that period of 10 days. Our grand total coming out of this last 10-day watch, 17. Yes, ma'am, and, and that's one of the concerns that I have, and I, if anybody knows different, then you let me know. But it's my understanding that at the end of this, this year, that state funding for the Guard, and deep, specifically DPS, is going to dry up, and it will be up to the next legislature to determine whether or not they're going to reinstate it. And it's my opinion, my opinion only, if they don't fund that DPS operation that's ongoing now, we're going to be right back to square one. Because there's no doubt in our minds that that presence has made a difference. And your other question was, how do we stop it? My opinion again, it's like the amusement park. If you want one and you want people to go home, what do you do? You turn off the rides and the attractions that they will leave. And that's what we're going to have to do. Let me go over time. Then we've got to speak over here. Yeah. Um, solution. All right, man, go ahead. If every person in this room writes, every legislator that they know, everybody in Austin and in Washington, and everybody, and you write, or you call, and you can get that information, 
That's what it's going to take, folks. We can sit here and talk all day, but we've got to be heard. You, all of us, have to be heard. And if we don't do it, we can sit here and talk all day and listen to all of you all day, and it will do nothing. We have to do it, folks. You and I have to do it. Stand in front and say, This is stupid. Just make sure you do your research on your representatives because I'm pretty sure most of us are probably conservatives. But make, make sure you do your research, even our conservative and our Republican candidates, because John Cornyn just came out and said he was in favor of the Green Act. And you need to make sure that you let him know that you are not in favor of that. And I'm not supposed to be political, and I'm not going to be. We, we have to, because of our 501c status, we have to stay out of politics. But I will tell you this is a fact. Uh, Senator Cruz, regardless of what you think of him otherwise, has taken a personal interest in what's been happening in South Texas. I and Mrs. Vickers have been on conference calls with his staff in Washington, D.C., getting reports. He sent one of his uh, coordinators to Cal Furious to pick up a copy of that thermal video that you saw of the 60. He has received subsequent videos. One of his staffers contacts us occasionally and says, can you give us some information in this area that we can put and report to the senator's office? So my point uh, is that some people are paying attention. How far we can get with them, I don't know, but we need to go back to the lady. We need to get other elected representatives on that same page. This morning. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to cut it off there so these are Thank you very much. We're going to take a very short intermission, about five minutes, just to get up and stretch a little bit.